Alright young men, so here we're going to start talking about how to calculate the net force of all the forces acting on an object. So let's talk about the unit of measurement for force. The unit of measurement for force is called the Newton, and we use the capital N for that. So just like if you're measuring distance, you can say 7 centimeters, or if you're measuring the volume of a liquid, you might be able to say 8 milliliters. Well, when we're measuring force, the force acting on an object, we would say 8 newtons. Or perhaps we would say 7 newtons. Or maybe we'd even say 1,467 newtons. Alright, so what is net force? Alright, net force is the combination of all forces acting on an object at one given time. So, what you're going to need here for this activity, you're going to need the handout that has examples of net force. There are examples A through F. So make sure you're on the right side of the handout and you have a pencil. If you're not ready, please make sure you get your materials and then continue playing the video. Alright, let's look at example A. We have a square here. Now this square is just representing an object. It can be any object you want it to be. So I'm just going to write object here. Alright, so let's take a close look at this. In this case, we have one force actually on this object and that one force is right here which direction is this force going great job it's moving towards the right now because this is the only force acting on this object that is its net force already because we combined all of them it's the only one so for our answer our net force would still be 200 25 newtons, which we got from this number. Now, because it's the only force acting on the object, it's going to cause the object to move. Therefore, it is an unbalanced force. Because unbalanced forces cause objects to change their motion. Which direction did we say it was going again? Great job, it's moving to the right. So you have two arrows here. You have an arrow pointing to the right and an arrow pointing to the left. So circle the one going to the right. Great job. So we just finished example A. Alright, so we have example B here. This one looks very, very similar to example A. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to pause the video, try doing this one, and then continue playing the video to see if you did a great job. Alright, so by this point, I'm sure you tried working this one out on your own to see how you did. Alright, so here we have one force acting on this object. Where is the force? Great job, it's 75 newtons. Which direction is this force going? Awesome, it's moving to the left. Is this the only force acting on the object, or are there others? Great job, it's the only force acting on the object, so because it's the only one, you already have your net force. So what did you write down for net force? Great job, you should have written down 75 newtons, because again, that's the only force. So since it's the only force, is it going to be balanced or unbalanced? Great job. It's going to be unbalanced. Which arrow did you circle? <laughs> Great job, guys. You should have circled the arrow going to the left. Awesome job. All right, let's look at example C now. So this one looks slightly different from examples A and B. This one has two sets of forces. It has forces acting on the left side, forces acting on the right side. Alright, so if you notice carefully, there are two different forces here on the left side. So before trying to combine all our forces on both sides, we have to combine all the forces on every single side on its own. So since we have two forces of 50 newtons on the left side, we're going to add those forces up. So, we have 
50 plus 50. What does that give us? Great job. We have 100 newtons of force here. Now, which direction is this force going? Great job. Since both the forces here that we added are going to the right, this one is also moving to the right. Great job. But we're not done yet, because now in this example, not only do we have 100 newtons of force moving to the right on this side, we also have 100 newtons of force moving to the left on this side. So are they moving in the same direction, or are they both going different ways? Alright, so I know what you're probably thinking, because I've heard this many times before. You're probably thinking, well, they're going the same direction because they're both pointing to the square. However, that's incorrect. If you notice carefully, the one on this side is going towards the right. The one on this side is pointing to the left. So they're going in opposite directions. So in this case, since they're going in opposite directions, we're going to subtract the two forces. So we're going to do 100 minus 100. So what does that give you? Great job, it gives us zero. So our net force for this example is zero newtons. All right now, so what do you notice about the two forces? Were they the exact same on both sides? Yeah, great job, you had a hundred on both sides. So because they're exactly the same, those forces are considered balanced. So now let's look at the two arrows we, that we have here. In the other two examples, we circled the arrow in the direction that the object would be moving. So what about here? If both forces were 100 and they were going the same direction, which one wins? Which one's stronger? Great job. Neither one wins. They're exactly the same, so because of that, this object is not going to move. So in this case, we don't circle any arrows. We can write down, however, no movement. Alright, so we just finished three examples. Let's go on to the fourth one.